Understanding the atom helps us to understand the scale of the universe. Without our understanding and knowledge of the atom, we wouldn't know how big the universe is. And so I hope to um, explain why that's true. We'll start off by uh, talking about the Rutherford scattering. Scattering. An atom in its natural state is electrically neutral. So we've got a positive nucleus at the center, and then it's uh, got a certain number of protons, say five, for example, and then the same number of electrons orbiting around the nucleus with the charge of the um, electron and the proton being opposite each other, then there's no net charge on, the, on an electrically neutral atom. Um, so in 1911, Ernest Rutherford shot helium nuclei. So what's helium? It has two protons in it. And those helium nuclei are called alpha particles. He shot these alpha particles at some gold foil. And what was expected to happen is that these alpha particles were expected to just roll right on through the gold foil. And the reason is that at the time, the understanding of the atom was a, was a plum pudding. So there, there was understanding that there was some charge in there, but it was thought that the nucleus was much bigger. And basically, the, the, the nucleus was as big as the atom was. So there's a smear of positive charge and then smear of negative charge. It wasn't understood how uh, small the nucleus was. But what actually happened is that some of the alpha particles were deflected at large angles and some even came backward um, toward the screen. Instead of going forward scattering, it's called backscattering. And this shows that positive charge, instead of being distributed uniformly throughout the atom, is concentrated in a small region called the nucleus. Um, the reason is that if it was spread out uniformly throughout the atom, then there wouldn't be enough positive charge in, in that uh, diffuse nucleus to repel that positively charged alpha particles. There's two protons that are coming in together. And his experiments, as, as well as other more recent experiments, have shown that the radius of the nucleus, the size of that nucleus, is about 10 to the minus 15 meters. Whereas the radius of electron or orbits, the size of the atom itself, is about 10 to the minus 10 meters. So the difference between those, as you can see, is a factor of about of 10 to the 5. These are rough numbers. It depends on the nucleus, it depends on the, the atom, but um, these are rough numbers to give you a scale of the size of the nucleus. So 10 to the 5, well 10 to the 3 of this is a thousand, so 10 to the 5 is a hundred thousand times, so the nucleus is a hundred thousand times smaller than the typical size of an atom. That nucleus is very, very small. So uh, let's do an example in the planetary model of the atom, the nucleus so there's what we're talking about here is analogous to the sun. Okay, so we have the sun here, and that's what we're thinking about being the nucleus. And we're given the radius of that sun, 7 times 10 to the 8 meters. Electron orbits, the, just like the Earth orbits the sun. So it's nice that this E stands for the Earth because it also stands for the electron orbiting around the nucleus. If the dimensions of the solar system had the same proportions as those of the atom, would the Earth be closer to or farther away from the sun than it actually is? So what we need is a ratio of those two lengths. So for the atom, the, the, um, the ratio is 10 to the minus 10 meters for the size of the atom divided by 10 to the minus 15 meters 
for the size of the nucleus. So if you're dividing by 10 to the minus 15, we'll need to first of all cancel. Divide by 10 to the minus 15 is the same as multiplying by 10 to the 15. And 10 to the minus 10 times 10 to the 15 is 10 to the 15 minus 10, which is 10 to the fifth, which is just the number that we talked about before. Well, what about with the uh, solar system? The size of the Earth orbits um, are 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So that's the size of the uh, Earth orbits divided by the uh, radius of the sun, which is 7 times 10 to the 8 meters. Well, uh, 7 goes into, um, well, 1 and a half, well, probably the easiest way to do it is to make this into a 15, make this into 10. So that's 15 divided by 7 is right around 2. And 10 to the 10 divided by 10 to the 8th is 10 squared. So that is a much smaller ratio than this ratio here. So the answer is that the Earth's orbit would be much farther from the Sun than it actually is if the Earth and the Sun system were analogous to an electron um, nuclear system.